Hello everyone, um, this is the JBC Precision Soldiering Station. Uh, it's one of their lower end models, but it's still quite an expensive station. It still comes in just under 400 quid, including VAT. Um, it uses the T210 uh, soldiering iron, and it takes the C210 soldiering cartridge tips. And it is a decent station, um, it's very popular. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys cheap alternatives out there. Um, here it is, all the way from China. It's made by Sugon, and it's called the Sugon T26 Soldiering Station. This is actually an older model soldering station. It's been around for some time now. Um, as you can see, it uh, takes a T210 soldering iron handle, which allows you to use the C210 uh, soldering tips made by JBC. Uh, it's basically a uh, clone of the uh, JBC soldiering station I showed you a minute ago. Uh, I did show the newer model to this uh, in my other video, so if you haven't seen it already, check it out. It's the T-36. It is actually quite a nice looking station. Um, yeah, it has all the uh, bits you would find on the JBC. And it has a little spring thing for holding the wire. I think that's to stop you pulling the station off the uh, workbench if you snag the cable, which is quite a great idea. Now, it's pretty simple controls, but this is what it's all about. It's a T210 soldering handle. This should allow me to use um, JBC tips on this station. And this station only costs $95, which is about 80 UK pounds, which is nothing. You can buy about four of these for the price of the JBC. One bad thing it does, it does come with uh, some funny looking plug, a bit like the other Sugon uh, station did, but you can get around this with a UK adapter, or you could just go out and buy a kettle lead with a 3 pin plug. Uh, I did that with the other station and it's all working absolutely fine. Uh, this station is rated at 220 volt uh, AC, so it's perfectly safe uh, on a 3 pin plug uh, to UK standards. Uh, on the back here you've got the earthing clamp cable, your on and off switch and also your soldering iron socket. I didn't actually get any soldering iron tips so uh, I ordered these directly from JBC. You can actually buy them from the uh, same seller as the Sugon place but I actually found JBC website is actually cheaper than buying it from China. And also you know they're genuine, don't you? They, they bought it from a certified seller from JBC. So yeah, if you uh, want tips, I'd suggest buy them directly from JBC, they're a lot cheaper. In one of my previous videos, I did a video on the Sugon T36 station, and that uses JBC C115 uh, tips. They're basically the JBC nano tips, and I put them side by side with the uh, T26 tips. Um, as you can see, there's a considerable difference between the two. Uh, they're a lot longer, uh, the T26, and there's a considerable difference between the size of the handles as well. This is the difference between the Sugon T36 and the Sugon T26 station. Uh, I've got it set up now. Um, as you can see on the front, there's pretty simple controls. Uh, channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, and uh, there's your temperature settings down the bottom. Um, if you hold and press, it goes really fast. And also you can just tap it for a simple uh, position. And it's pretty simple. You set the temperature and then just hold the channel. And this will preset your channel. So yeah, pretty simple controls here. Um, right, it's pretty much based on the quick hot air station uh, as far as controls are concerned. It does heat up. It's not as quick as the T36, but it is pretty quick. And this is a JBC, genuine JBC tip in the end here. And as you can see, it's working absolutely fine. There's also a feature where you, you just tap this, the temperature goes up. Uh, this is pretty handy, so if you're working on something um, and you don't want to be playing around with the buttons, just tap there, So, which is a pretty cool feature actually. Uh, also, on this station, you can hold channel 1 and 3 together, like you can on the quick, and it puts it in calibrate mode. Uh, this allows you to finely tune the temperature settings. So if you go up, 
It'll be, uh, so I've gone up here, it's 5 offset temperature. Uh, if you've got a soldering tip um, uh, measure, you can measure the end of the tip and then program in the settings. Which is pretty uh, cool actually, you, uh, you can sort that out. For the money, you can't really go wrong, I'm not being funny, it's, this machine's 80 quid. And you're using genuine JBC tips, you can't really go wrong for the money, it's a nice little station. Also, the stand uh, senses when the iron's put in the holder, so um, obviously when you put the iron in the holder, it'll um, start cooling down. Once it gets to 150, I think it shuts the machine off. So yeah, you can use this to use genuine JBC tips. I'm now going to be chopping this up, I'll show you in a minute, I'm going to be customising it. Uh, to make it a bit more practical to use. Um, if you want to go ahead with this, this is entirely up to you, but you don't have to because it is a pretty nice station. I'll definitely give it a thumbs up and recommend it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, I'll be um, customising it so I can make it even better. Right, time for the makeover. This is quite a heavy unit, to believe it or not. It, um, I believe it's this yellow transformer. It's quite heavy. Right, there's no going back now. Uh, I believe that's two core cable inside there. Just prepping the cables now. I believe these two cables here, uh, one's for the sensor to uh, enable the soldering station to know the irons in the uh, stand and I think the other one's for the touch uh, temperature so yeah I've got them ready now just pop a quick hole in the side here this enable me to poke the cable through right I fed the cable through the casing through the hole and uh, I'm just prepping it now for a new connector uh, as you can see, I've sorted out the sensor cable, uh, still got other stuff to do, but uh, so far so good, it's all detached now. Uh, I no longer need this flap at the back now, it's now redundant. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut the um, casing out for the power lead. It's finally removed the uh, soldering iron socket, uh, which enables me to get to the cables at the back of the socket. Uh, the stand, I've uh, taken the bottom off and removed the uh, wire from inside. So that's all ready to go. Right, here I have a heat resistant cable. It's a three core cable. I nicked this off an old electric radiator. Uh, I wanted to use heat resistant because it is an iron after all. Right, I've prepared the cable, I've removed the insulation both sides, exposing the three cores inside. So that's all ready to go. Uh, these are little junction blocks which allow you to uh, use the connectors uh, for safe connections. Right, it's ready to wire up now. I'm being really careful not to cut the uh, pins on the inside. Right, I've got the connector blocks installed to the power gates uh, that come out the back of the uh, soldering iron socket. So that's all ready to go, and the sensor cables fed to the outside of the casing. I've also put them on uh, the soldering iron socket, the connector blocks. This will enable me to connect the cable in between the station and the socket. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put the cable in now. Right, I've got the cable connected, the heat resistant cable, uh, one end on the station and one end on the socket. So yeah, uh, this is about a metre long this cable, 
So it enabled me to uh, come away from the station with the soldering iron socket, which I plan on mounting inside here. Right, I'm going to mark it up because there's two pillars inside here where the screw holes go, so I have to uh, mark it de uh, dead centre in the middle, otherwise it'll clash with the screws. Right, just quickly get this old cut. Right, finally got it out. Um, yeah, it looks pretty much a perfect fit, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe a little trim up. Right, I'm almost done. Um, I've run the cable from here all the way to the stand. And in the side there, I've got the cable fed in the side. Uh, the sensor cable, I'm still, I've ruled it some, but it hasn't turned up yet. And there's the socket for the soldering iron. Um, basically, I'm going to glue it in place, but it is fixed in quite well. So yeah, that's, that enables me to plug the soldering iron directly into the back of the stand. Uh, I can go ahead now and cut the flap off. Right, the flap's finally off. I smoothed it out as much as I can with the grinder, but I reckon sandpaper would be better. I can do that later. As you can see, it's half the size now, uh, without the flap. It's a lot smaller. The reason I'm doing this, because I want to uh, put the actual iron on the shelf above the desk, so that it's not in the way. All I've got to have on the workstation now is the stand which gives me a lot more room on the workstation. Uh, that's the only problem with them all in ones, uh, they take up a lot of room and you have to have them quite close to your setup. So yeah, with this now, I've got a metre of uh, cable coming out the back which enables me to put this up on the shelf. It all appears to be working absolutely fine, as you can see with the iron, everything works. It won't actually shut off at the moment because I haven't run the sensor cable, but once I do that, the sensor should uh, kick in. So yeah, there you have it. A fully more practical uh, soldering station. Please give a like if you like the video and thanks so much for watching.